Hi, uh, my name is Victoria Yampolsky, and I run the Startup Station, a comprehensive financial resource for early stage startups. In this video, we're going to talk about how to estimate demand for a very early stage company. What does this mean? That we're going to talk about how to estimate demand for a company that doesn't yet have revenues and whose product may not even be ready. So this is the issue that bugs a lot of entrepreneurs when they think about creating financial projections. And for a good reason, this is not easy. However, luckily for you, I'm going to offer you a three-step logical approach that you can take to create projections that are going to be based on your strategy and the ones that you can hope to execute against. Okay, so first let's reframe our objective here and let's call our projections goals. So instead of guessing what we're going to achieve, we're going to set goals for what we're going to achieve. So let's talk about that. How can we set those goals properly? Step number one is to figure out the percentage of market share of the overall addressable market that you can hope to capture in years one through five. Now, of course, for that, you need to do market research. You need to consider different customer segments and you need to consider all of the monetization ways or revenue streams in which you're going to be making money on those customer segments. Okay, this will allow you to calculate the total market share of the overall addressable market that you can hope to capture, okay, in years one through five. Now, the trick here is to be conservative. One of the fallacies that a lot of startup founders fall into is that they set their projections to be too high, okay? And nobody believes them for a good reason because most likely they're not going to be able to achieve them, okay? But also don't be too shy. Don't set your projections too low, which is another extreme that a lot of founders, specifically female founders, fall into because then guess what? Your company is not an attractive investment. The trick here is to set realistic goals and to really think through how you're going to achieve them. Once you set your market share goals, you can multiply them by the appropriate market size to calculate your dollar revenue goal. When you project your market size growth, consider the growth rate for your industry, which you can get from doing market research. Step number two is to set a marketing budget for years one through five. And here you have to consider your capital constraints. As a young company, you don't have access to a lot of capital. So you have to be cognizant of that when you set your marketing budget. And step number three, you have to figure out how you're going to allocate that marketing budget amongst different go-to-market strategies. What is a go-to-market strategy? It's simply a marketing channel. Now, remember, some channels are paid, such as paid advertising, and some are not. For example, earned media, which is an interview on the Today Show, or uh, an interview on a famous podcast is free to you. However, it can afford you a lot of exposure that can convert to sales. When you think about your go-to-market strategies, you model all of the strategies, free and paid, but you have to allocate your budget only amongst the paid ones. 
Now, of course, every strategy has a conversion rate because you don't yet have any data from the market. You can take an industry standard. Once you start getting data for your product or service, you can change that conversion rate to whatever your business has. Okay. So as a result, when you model all of your go-to-market strategies, right, and you apply the appropriate conversion rates, you will be able to calculate how much of your product and service you plan to sell in each of the months for the next five years. Lastly, once you do all the projections, you will be able to check whether the amount of revenue you project to generate based on your go-to-market strategies and a marketing budget matches with your sales goals that you set in step number one. And then you may have to adjust your model a little bit to make sure that they are more or less in line or adjust one or the other in case your original sales goals were not too realistic. And voila! We have a framework that you can use to estimate demand for a company that doesn't yet have any revenues. For more information on how to model demand and how to model different business models for early stage tech startups, please go to www.thestartupstation.com and check out our second class on financial modeling. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below, share it with your friends, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.